Hi. Good morning, everybody. I'm very excited about uh, starting this new uh, course on Facebook Live, TWR Facebook Live. I wanted to welcome all the Cyber Sangha members and also all my Facebook friends and many, many other people, whoever is on this uh, Facebook today. So this is very exciting. We have seven week, uh, continuously every week, uh, a talk. And uh, ev that will be every Tuesday, uh, 1 p.m. New York time. And then uh, it will last about half an hour to 40 minutes. And every Thursday, uh, one o'clock New York time, we'll have a, a question and answers. And so previously, uh, people who would have uh, uh, questions, and they will, you will post your questions, and we'll select some of the questions, and we will try to answer that question on Thursday. And also have uh, each time we will have a, a short session of meditation. Uh, since we don't have so much time, but we will probably around 10 minutes uh, both session on Tuesday and also on Thursday. So, so this is what's going to happen. And the title for um, for the seven seven week courses is the healing power of your breath. And so, the healing power of your breath is breath is something that we all know how important it is to. If without the breathing, we'll be dying. Without the air, the plant will die. Uh, so it's impossible. And um, so the breath, I, when we when we breathe, we call it breath. But in in a deeper, in a sense, it is uh, prana. Uh, the in Sanskrit, chi in Chinese, and uh, lung uh, in Tibetan. So. Uh, also, we don't just say lung, we say lung rinpoche, uh, so it's like a precious wind uh, because it has a lot of healing uh, elemental qualities on those winds. So so this wind and the breath, I'm kind of bringing them together, understanding and how these things can work in the practices. So today, particularly, uh, today's topic is you are not your pain. So that I think it's a first thing I think it's very important to understand before we go into uh, understanding ourselves, understanding our conflicts and pain and and finding through these uh, precious winds and precious sacred breath how to heal and how to liberate and block these blockages. I think it's very important to understand in the first place to 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 kind of some sense of able to separate that you are not your pain. So I wanted to kind of discuss discuss about it a little bit. For example, let's contemplate a little bit. You know, um, when we suffer as a human being, sometimes I wonder that we it seems like somehow we have to suffer or something or we need to suffer or something. Human being cannot uh, cannot live without suffering or something. So this feels like something because it, people who are not having pain or conflict um, and when you're feeling so great, you know, like happy and everything is going fine, at some point you get a little bit bored saying, oh, well, this everything is going so good so far. And maybe it's a, I'm getting a little bored now. It's maybe time to suffer a little bit, you know. And uh, what should I do today to that so I can suffer a little bit more? It seems like sometimes, it feels like sometimes we kind of get into that uh, <clears throat> search mood of suffering. And I, in a way, it kind of makes sense because uh, whenever you are suffering, whenever you are in pain and you are the ego is surviving and uh, the the food of the ego is the suffering so food of the ego is a conflict so when there is a conflict there is a war there is a individual pain there is a collective pain there is a collective family pain 
so that the family ego, collective ego survives. The individual collective, has the individual ego survives. So basically, suffering seems like the food of the ego. And uh, so if you, if you have no one else, if you, if you don't have any sense of who you are, rather than your pain identity, your pain body, your ego, then it completely makes sense to suffer some, every now and then, weekly base, monthly base, uh, annually, I don't know. You have to create some sense of enough suffering so that you will survive, which means you identify you as your ego and your, as your pain. It has to survive. When, when you are able to somehow able to distinguish yourself, separate yourself, from your pain, from your ego, from your, we say, dangzi, the ego, uh, when you're able to separate, then the, you do not need to, to uh, su you don't need to, to suffer in order to survive. The ego needs to, to suffer in order to, it to survive. So that makes completely sense. That's why I think it's important to talk a little bit about how, how, you can feel some sense of able to distinguish you and your pain. So that's why the topic is, you are not your pain. You are much better, higher, uh, uh, freer uh, than your pain. Your pain, which is really like the pain body, uh, pain identity, uh, if, if you are that, then you need to, to suffer. You look for suffering. And so that's what is happening. So let's look at a few places. One, possessions. How many of you are there that you really, really identify with what you have? So I basically I want everybody, everybody to so contemplate for a moment. We are not same. We are definitely not same. And everybody is different. But everybody has a work here to contemplate and self-reflect to see, do you, are you the one who identify with your possessions? Do you identify with your collection of whatever? I mean, I heard in Texas there are three times more gun than the people. The average each individual owns three guns. That means some people own many guns. They're collecting. They identify with the gun, which is really, really not a nice thing to do, but people do. Or whatever it is, you 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 identify with just think about that second how much you identify with your body it gets a little better right gun your car better than better body is better than the gun and the cars so do you identify with your body how much you identify with your body when you look at yourself when you see your face do you see that is you? When you feel something in your body, do you think that's you? When you have a pain in your body, do you identify with that pain? When you are sick in your body, do you identify with that? I am sick. People say sometimes that. You are, not, you are identifying with the sickness. You are not that sickness. You are not that pain. The moment you are able to see some s separation, distinction between you and your pain, then that you, that awareness, becomes a healer, uh, becomes a support. That a sense of who you are, who is not that body and not that pain. You do not age. Your body ages. So if you don't want it to get old, don't be your body. 
If you don't want it to die, don't be your body. Be yourself. Be that inseparable state of un unbounded space and awareness. That space and light. Be that inseparable pure space and pure light. But not your conditional body. How much you identify with what you feel? Oh, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling hurt. I get, I'm feeling hurt. I'm really feeling hurt. I'm, you hurt me. You hurt me. I feel hurt. In some sense, some, somewhere there, you, you kind of get mixed up. Not I have a pain, not I feel pain, but I am that hurt. I am that wound. I am that pain. So just just kind of little bring a little bit more awareness in your situation in your life how much you identify with these emotions. Or how much you identify with the pain that you feel in your body the pain that you feel in your mind. You get really like sucked into that feeling, experience in that pain and you identify that. And when you feel that way, that so obviously what happens when you become that and a, a different aspect of you having kind of conversation in between the activities of conceptual mind or activities of grasping mind, activities of a multiple uh, dimension of egos communicating together and they are able to produce collectively enough pain, enough conflict and in order them to survive, in order principal ego to survive. So that's what's happening here. So what I wanted to do here is first uh, to for just for a moment to be aware of it okay so let's just uh, for a moment uh, contemplate in this uh, i wanted to just lead a maybe a short meditation maybe just a 10 minute meditation uh, where uh, i don't want uh, to to think about theories about it i really want it to make more personal experience and your experience, your, your self-reflection, your self-awareness, your self-realization, and your transformation, it becomes about you, not uh, a doctrine, theory, philosophy, not like that. So, so let's just sit for a moment, comfortably. Take five times deep breathing, twice longer breathe, breathings, and you exhale all the still breaths, all the tensions that you feel in your body, in your breath, in your mind, all the discomfort. Just five times deep inhale, deep exhale, and when you inhale, just make sure when you feel that you don't have any more uh, air to breathe in, but that is not true. There are much more. Just breathe those leftover breath. Inhale, and when you exhale, when you think you have exhaled completely, but that's usually it's not true. There is a little bit more to clear, and just be aware to clear them. So do five times deep breathings.
This continues two more cycle of breath. And also be aware that you are fully supported by me. I am connected to you. We are connected to each other. There is here right now over 350 people uh, meditating together with us from all around the world. We are lively connected. Just feel that support from each other. Expand your consciousness, your awareness to all those people and we are supporting each other. When you are expanding your awareness, feel that a feeling of that you're looking out, you're looking, expanding yourself, expanding toward others, expanding toward these 350 people around who are participating with us during this meditation. Feel that expansion. At the same time, bring your full attention to your body, Be fully aware of the stillness in your body. When you're aware of that stillness in your body, it immediately helps your mind to stabilize, feel more grounded. Breathe deep continuously. Be aware of the silence and feel that silence. Feel that silence as a collective silence. You are not only feeling silence in you, you are feeling silence around you, you are feeling silence among all these friends who are practicing with you this moment. Be aware of your heart, your mind is open, it's spacious like a crystal clear sky in the desert. Not only your heart is open, be aware and feel the connection to all the hearts which are also open with you this moment. Expand your stillness, expand your silence, expand your spaciousness of your heart. Receive this in others. Rest in that awareness of stillness, silence and spaciousness for a moment. Now be aware and self-reflect in your life. Challenges that you're experiencing at your work, in your family, your finance, your health, your relationship, whatever form of pain 
either it's a physical, emotional, or psychological. Just be aware of that as they are, not elaborating more, not trying to change, not trying to minimize. As it is, be aware. But be aware from that stillness of your body. Be aware of that from the silence of your inner voices in your head or silence of speech. Be aware of that from the sacred space of your heart, the spaciousness of your mind, boundlessness of your awareness. Just see it as it is. Just feel that stillness, collective stillness. Feel that collective silence, collective spaciousness. We are all supporting each other from our inner stillness. We are all supporting each other from our inner silence. We are all supporting each other from that inner spaciousness. We are all supporting each other, the awareness of that stillness, silence, and spaciousness. Because awareness can expand beyond time and space. My awareness is reaching you, and your awareness is reaching me, and these awareness are supporting each other. Trust that for a moment. So whatever the pain you're experiencing, just be aware now that that is not you. You are this unbounded, spacious, unconditioned awareness. You are this pure awareness. You are not that pain. Emaho. Recognize that. Recognize that. Recognize you are not that pain. You are your pure awareness. Those you who recognize this. This is the moment you host. The awareness accommodates your pain. Awareness is able to accommodate your pain because awareness is unbounded space. Space accommodates anything and everything. When you are not grasping your pain, when you are leaving the pain as it is, when you are hosting in that unbounded space with the pure awareness, the pain gradually begin to liberate, to dissolve. Witness that.
may your innate awareness, your rikpa, continuously shine and clear all of your pain. May you able to distinguish your grasping mind, your pain from the innate awareness. May the self-liberation take place that these pain liberates by themselves when nobody else, no pain, no grasping might, no ego is feeding them. Okay, so uh, so now, just for a moment, um, you can open your eye, and uh, I want uh, all of you to share uh, some of your uh, feedbacks and how was the meditation, and how how is the sound? And today, this this time, I added an external microphone on my iPhone. By the way, this is uh, happening just from my iPhone and uh, and just there's an external microphone and sound supposed to be better than uh, last time. Okay, great. Sound is good. Wonderful. Thank you, Mariela. Um, just maybe uh, as you all begin to tell me how the meditation experience what is, give me some feedback and uh, and um, always helpful for me to see a little feedback and so I know what's going on. Um, now, just one last comment here is the... Um, sometimes people say, well, when we are... when I go into the meditation of the three doors deep into my body, stillness into my body, deep in the silence of my speech, deep in the spaciousness of mind, I'm feeling so great, wonderful, and then suddenly I say, oh, reflect your life, reflect your uh, suffering, reflect your pain, and that kind of destroys all my meditation. And I know people, sometimes people say that, feel that. I can imagine too that, you know, sometimes I, I have felt that in the past. So I might just wanted to make one last comment on that before we end the day. Is It's very true that sometimes when you are really, really, really feeling like a deep, uh, deep meditation and great practices, it's of course in some sense it's better to just continue as you are going deep. So, uh, and I would, in some cases, I would definitely recommend to do that because, uh, uh, yes, exactly the logic is when it's it, when you have a really deep meditation, why mess it up? But on the other hand, this is this is the technique or the, some. Uh, some approach that I'm trying to teach here is when you are feeling good, when you are in that space, when you feel that space, you are strong, you are indestructible like a space. You can accommodate anything. You, have, you will not worry about anything. You are strong. When you are their awareness, you can, be, you can connect with anything. You can be aware of anything. You can go toward anything. You are you are fearless. You are fearless. So you have ability. It's like a light. Light is not afraid to walk into the darkness because darkness will never win from the light. Light will always illuminate the darkness. Always. No matter how small light is, it will always illuminate the darkness. So this very moment, you are that light. That's why you wanted to see illuminate that some aspect of the darkness of yourself, such as pain in this case. Same way we, we say like uh, the experience of warmth, you are feeling, you are feeling good, you are feeling warmth, you are feeling love. When you are feeling love, then maybe that is the moment to, to look at the person who you are angry at. Because then you will, you, you, you will not see that person through your fear, 
or through your uh, anger, you will have a glimpse of experiences of that situation and that person from the experience of love. It's like a glasses, you know, and I'm looking my, without my reading glasses, maybe I begin to see a little bit fuzzy. So I will say, should I just keep on looking with a little bit fuzziness? Or if, if I have opportunity to wear my glasses, I wear it, I see everything very clear. Once I see one time uh, something that I have a doubt of for maybe last 10 years, and one moment with the glasses, I see it, what it is, the truth. And that is the moment of big shift, a transformation, a change, because I saw the truth and I am free from that a wrong perception, wrong concept, wrong notion from for all these years experiences that I have been having. I, in one second, I overcome like a, like a light. In one second, it illuminates the darkness, regardless of how old the darkness is. Thousands here of darkness, room with darkness, very thick darkness with a lot of story with darkness, but the light only knows how to illuminate. It does not interview, it does not ask questions, it does not discuss us. It's just with that silence, it clears, it illuminates. So, so thank you very much, everybody, and thank you for this wonderful feedbacks that I had, I'm seeing continuously, and everybody, it seems like a, and thank you for also, and many of you were enthusiastic, and so all you are enthusiastic is my fire for me. And what gives me fire that uh, I know uh, I get excited and engaged about to do these things as you all are. And so, so the next thing is what we will do is the um, this coming Thursday. Coming Thursday will be. Um, so coming Thursday, exactly the same time, um, one o'clock New York time, we will not be talking on the new topic, and, but I will be guiding the same meditation and I will be answering some of the questions that I feel like, uh, which is uh, um, helpful and might kind of apply to many people. I will pick some of those questions. I will. Uh, go through those questions, and I will definitely love to go into another session of meditation, short, maybe long, little longer meditation than today, uh, what we did. And uh, meanwhile, uh, I want all of you to continue with the, this this simple meditation. It's a, a meditation. You cannot say this is a. Um, Buddhist meditation, burn meditation, Hindu meditation, Christian meditation, this is a meditation, this is a your meditation, this is a self meditation. Think about that. This is a meditation, something is, uh, it's something for you, within you, and help you to transcend and transform. So just look at that as a very much a personal meditation. And, uh, uh, but obviously, these, everything what I am teaching here, it's a universal knowledge, and but they are very rooted, in a sense, in our teachings, and particularly many of my teachings, they are very much connected with uh, two two important sources. One is called Shangju Nianju, it's a cycle of Dzogchen teaching in a burn tradition, and another is called Maju Sangje Jusum. This is a, a cycle of tantric t t teaching in a in a, a Maju Mother Tantra. In burn tradition, so these are my my own practices. This is where I ins it inspires me, where I am deeply connected, where I have taught and have blessings from my teachers, and so. But these are glimpses of uh, a little smell and flower and taste of meditation coming out for all of you. So I hope you enjoy all of this. So thank you very much, and we will see you. Uh, next Thursday, 1 p.m. And again, thank you very much. I know many of you have been uh, like uh, liking the page and uh, 
commenting on this page and sh and particularly uh, sharing this page. I know like a uh, it's a it's a big deal sometimes to share something that you you don't know for sure. But uh, but I'm very happy that you know, so many people have helped to outreach and particularly I'm very happy to thank that I have a, a Facebook Live a team who has been uh, working so hard and and I know like a, a, every day like a 30 40 text messages back and forth on trying to develop uh, uh, enrich these uh, teachings furthermore uh, there's a whole team people and then I also want to thank that uh, all the representative of our own Ligmicha local Sangha members who also are very actively uh, trying to support this to uh, informing the local level of Sangha members. And so thank you, thank you, thank you, and see you uh, next Thursday.